said it. Marie Antoinette, right? Well, guess what? She didn't. It wasn't Marie Antoinette. It was another queen a hundred years before Marie Antoinette even came to France. And what she actually said was let them eat brioche. So why do we remember Marie Antoinette saying, let them eat cake? Well, it was propaganda. The revolutionaries wanted to show the common people that the royals were out of touch. And that's how they did it. But it got me thinking, what was a cake like during the late 1700s? Let's go make a cake. I'm always learning when it comes to history and cooking. Looking through 18th century sources, I found recipes for rich cakes and great cakes. Now in the 1700s, a great cake wasn't like, hey, that's great. It meant a big cake. No, not that big. That's better. The cake I'm working on today is Hannah Glass's rich cake. So we need to soak our currants and our candied fruits in brandy for this recipe. So I'm just gonna add them all to the same bowl with a half a cup of brandy. 18th century recipes feature currants rather than raisins. Although currants look like little raisins, they're actually a different fruit. There was no such thing as a seedless grape back then. Every raisin had a seed. Currants have tiny seeds and can be eaten whole. Can you imagine if you had to de-seed every single raisin for a recipe? Three cups of flour, and this is my nutmeg. And you take your whole nutmeg and just grind it right over the top of your food. Nutmeg was huge in the 17th and 18th centuries. They used it as a spice and a medicine. It was rare. It only grew in the Banda Islands of Indonesia, so the Dutch and the English actually fought battles over it. Tangent alert. In order to secure the nutmeg trade, the Dutch negotiated a treaty where they got the Spice Islands and the English got a little island called Manhattan. There we go. And then I also have over here spices and that goes in there as well. And then we'll just mix them all together and we're gonna cream together our butter and sugar. Okay, now we need to separate eggs, four eggs. Now I'm going to use my birch bark whisk, which is typical of the era. And this, to get them as light and fluffy as we want them to be, Hannah Glass says it's gonna take about half an hour. So I won't make you watch the whole time. <laughs> now we just have to combine these together. So we'll start with about a half a cup of the dry and just mix that in. All right, now a little bit of the wet and we're going to use that lovely soaked rum and add a little bit of that in. Well, the rum didn't soak, but the fruit soaked in the rum. Brandy. Brandy, not rum, it's brandy. And I promise I have not been nipping. <laughs> you believe me? <laughs> so I went ahead and whipped up the whites of the eggs. Now we're gonna fold it into the combined cake batter. And I have to say this dough is rather thick. So now the last thing we're gonna do before we put it in the pan is we're gonna fold in our um, nuts, which is almonds, half cup almonds, and our um, brandied fruit. So first thing in is my cookie cutter. That way it'll raise the bottom of the pot off or the pan 
off the bottom so that it doesn't over bake and burn on the bottom because of course the hot coals are going to go right underneath the Dutch oven. And we'll put our lid on. I want 325 degrees in my Dutch oven for this cake. So I'm going to need a little less than one scoop of coals in my um, little shovel. And then you put your Dutch oven on top. You want to add a little bit more coal to the top than on the underneath part because heat rises. So the heat underneath will be going stronger than the coals on the top. So you want to add about a half of a scoop full of your shovel more on top than you have underneath. And I gotta get it out without burning myself. <laughs> there we go. There it is. All right, I'm gonna let it cool in the pan for a few minutes. So the cake is finished. It smells really good. Um, if you wanna put something over the top, they wouldn't have done anything very extravagant. In here, I have pounded sugar. What does that mean? Well, I took sugar and I poured it inside and I pounded it until it became powdered sugar. So I think I will dust a little bit of powdered sugar over the top. I'm going to cut a slice and give it a taste. I taste the fruit. I taste the orange peel and the lemon peel. And I taste the brandy. And just a hint of the spices. A little mace. A little nutmeg. <laughs> really good. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you would like today's recipe, visit www.freshhothistory.com. Dot com. Now, go make some history.